Hi and welcome back to the channel. Looking for an easy way to make some miniature beds? Then you need to make sure you're watching this video. I'll take you step by step through an easy process and give you a few options along the way. Let's check it out. The first thing I did to get started is I went online and I found pictures of traditional handmade quilts and I printed them out in various sizes. For a twin you want something that's measuring two inches by two and a half, a queen three by two and a half, and a king is a three by three inch square. So what you do once you get these all printed out, you're just going to trim these away using a pair of scissors. You could also use a ruler and exacto knife on top of a cutting mat. To make the pillows, it's actually very easy. Get yourself some foam core, cut a strip that is a half inch wide. Length isn't as critical if you're doing longer strips. Then you're gonna cut it into segments that are measuring an inch and a half wide. If you're doing double pillows, if you're doing just a single pillow, you're actually gonna split the difference between that inch and a half piece to make two separate pillows. Once you get these segments measured out, you're then going to take a nail file and just buff the edges a little bit to round them out. For the two pillows stuck together, I did put a little notch in the center and then use the file to sort of create the rounded off edges for each pillow. You just angle the file a little bit and go back and forth and then you get that nice little divot demarcating where the two pillows meet. You can also take your thumbnail and just make little fold creases into the pillow tops themselves as well. When it comes to bed sizes, these are the measurements I used, which is why it's also important to keep in mind the measurements I gave you for when you go to print out the quilts. For a twin bed, you want it to be one and a half inches long by one inch wide. A queen is going to be two inches long by one and a half inches wide. And a king bed should measure two inches long by one and three quarters wide. I actually had a reserve of just scrap pieces of foam, so I made sure I cut these pieces out to the widths and the lengths I wanted. And then what I did is basically just buy the chunk of one inch foam that I was originally using and that gave me two mattresses and bases essentially for your beds. And like the pillows, you're gonna wanna make sure you take a nail file and just round off the edges of the top portion of the mattresses. You can actually leave the bottom squared off as it is from the cuts. Just test fit your pillows, make sure everything's lining up and we're gonna proceed with the assembly. To make it easier to put this together, you're gonna to wanna to put your quilt onto the mat and find your center and then also center your mattress to that point and mark where the edges meet as you're seeing here. This is going to help make it easier to glue the bottom of the quilt to one of the edges of the mattresses. So you start off with some hot glue, line up where you have made those marks at the end of the quilt and place it up against the mattress. Now make sure you know which is your top and which is your bottom that will be important. It helps to smooth the paper over and then you're going to put hot glue onto the mattress itself but you're going to leave an area open if you're making this where it's a fully made bed with the pillows covered. Smooth out the hot glue as best you can and then you're going to gently fold the paper over and smooth it up and on top of the mattress to avoid any wrinkles and bumps. Do this slowly and carefully. Once you have that attached to the foam, what you're going to do is fold over that top portion of the quilt to create your fold line. Then you're going to take a set of your pillows, put some hot glue onto the pillows, and place it back on top of the mattress, making sure to also have the pillows catch where you have folded over the quilt. Once the glue has cooled on this portion, you are going to put some more hot glue on top of the pillow itself, and you're going to fold the, pa the paper quilt up and over. It will help to do a test run of this first before putting the glue on as you're seeing here. So here I've done the test folding, making sure that the paper folds up and over, fine tuning the folds themselves. Once I've gotten that squared away, I then go and move on to putting the hot glue on top of the pillow area and basically just folding everything back over on itself again. For the size of the bed, again, make sure you do a test fold and then you can smooth some hot glue onto the side of one side of the bed. And like you've been doing before, just gently smooth that paper down and have it attached to the foam mattress. Make sure you do this to both sides, of course, otherwise it's gonna look a little odd as it's sticking out on the other side. 
At this point, you may find you do need to trim away some excess paper or off the bottom of the mattress. That's easy enough to do with a utility knife and your cutting mat. Just gently line yourself up against the edge of the mattress and do a few scores across the paper to peel away any excess paper that is hanging over the edge. This will make sure that the bed basically sits nice and flat on top of the table. Now for the back portion of the bed, you're basically kind of finishing this off as if you were wrapping a present. You can go in and cut some of the paper to make it a little bit more easy to fold and get some nice sharp creases if you so choose. Basically what you want to do is do a pre-fold ahead of time like you've been doing before. I removed some of the excess paper just so there wasn't as much bulk in the back and using the hot glue again just fold that paper over so that it covers the excess portions of the mattress. Now in this case with the bed being made like this you don't have to worry about the back portion of the foam being there. For the corners, I played around a little bit and basically just pushed the corner down so it flared out a little bit. And then you can go back in with a dollop of hot glue inside that area and just put it in there so that it holds the shape of the fold. For the head and footboards, I made use of decorative popsicle sticks and a square from the Doris package that I got of different shaped wooden pieces that you've seen from the table video that I've done previously. Taking that square piece, I cut off a half inch of the square so that I now have two rectangles. The larger rectangle is going to be my headboard. The smaller is going to be the footboard. You will want to go back in with a nail file and make sure to smooth off any cut edges. Otherwise, they might be jagged. The next thing I did was take those decorative popsicles and I just sort of figured out where I liked the design in terms of how it laid up against the headboard portion of this build. So I snipped off the lengths that I would need and again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're filing these bits just to smooth edges. And then taking my hot glue gun, I basically attached them on either end of the rectangle to create posts on the headboard, which is very easy. Just put a bead of hot glue down, smooth it out a little bit so that these popsicle sticks aren't raised by the bead of hot glue, and place the one popsicle stick against the edge of the headboard. And this is gonna give it more of a decorative look with posts. Make sure you do it to both sides. The last thing I did was take a portion of scrap popsicle stick and I put it between the two posts on the headboard just so that there wouldn't be a gap for where this is going to attach to the back of the mattress. And you can also make sure you go through and file again one more time to even everything out. The headboard is a very similar approach. Again, make sure you smooth off the edges. You will need to change the length of your posts unless you do want them to be even. That is also up to you. In this case, I had the posts at different heights. So cut off the lengths that you'll need for the footboard portion and you're going to do the same thing as you did for the headboard, making sure to attach the post on either side of your footboard. Painting these is actually very easy. I am working with a natural wood grain. So first I'm starting off with the Craftsmart Medium Brown. Essentially you wanna put a thin layer of this paint over the headboard and the footboard, uh, making sure that you're working with the wood grain and getting into all of those nooks and crannies. Again, this is not a thick layer of paint. This is a very thin layer. I do recommend with the headboard that you paint all sides. When it comes to the footboard, you can focus more on the side that will be facing out. Once they've dried completely, you're going to move over to the Agrax Earthshade from Citadel and you're going to be using this as a wood stain. You're going to paint it on to the dried paint and it's going to seep into the wood and the wood grain is going to be revealed. So it's a very quick and easy way to get a wood effect using these wooden pieces for your headboard. When it comes to attaching these, again, you're going to move over to using your hot glue gun, putting hot glue onto the back of the mattress, and then attaching the headboard, making sure to line it up with the base of the mattress. Same thing for the footboard, apply the glue, make sure you smooth it out, and then just line it up with your mattress, making sure the edges meet at the bottom, and attach the two together, hold it for a little bit, release once the two have cooled enough, and you will have this little bed ready to go. Because of the paper element, it is important that you use Mod Podge Matte to seal these pieces. Basically, just on the paper portion, use that matte Mod Podge and smooth it over the entire surface where there is paper. Don't go too heavy handed with this. You don't want to smear the print, but you do want to make sure you get a good layer on. For a varnish look on the footboard and the headboard, you switch over to the Mod Podge Gloss. Again, this is straight up Mod Podge. You're not thinning this out. Do the same thing. Paint it onto your headboard and your footboard to seal your painting job. Then just make sure to let it dry thoroughly before putting it to use. 
To have beds with a pillow out option, it's a very similar approach except this time you put hot glue on the entire top of the mattress and smooth that paper down. Then you're going to take the excess paper that is left over and fold it at the top of the mattress so that the fold meets the edge of the top portion of the mattress. And if you see that you have too much paper, which I did in this case, you can simply just trim away the excess paper that you do not want to have. It will help to use your utility knife and your cutting mat to do this. Yes, I freehanded this, but you can also use a ruler in that case as well. Fold the paper back over to make sure it's the right length. Put a little bit of hot glue onto the paper once you have it where you need it and smooth it down so that you have a nice folded over quilt. And you're going to make sure you also take care of the sides as you have seen before. The exposed section of mattress and the pillow, we're gonna be using the antique white from Apple Barrel. And this is very easy to do. Basically just take the paint and you're going to paint the exposed portion of foam in the mattress on the one side and just very carefully put this antique white on. This will help if you have any gapping or anything that's sort of peaking out from underneath your quilt. You're also going to put this onto the pillow and make sure you let that dry thoroughly before attaching it to the top of the bed. I did also dry brush vanilla ice cream on top of the pillow to bring out the crease details. Then just take some hot glue on the bottom of your pillow and attach it to the top portion of your bed where you have that fold in the quilt and that will give you the pillow out look to your beds. With this option you can leave it with or without a footboard or a headboard even. This is completely up to you. And here we have our final look of the various types of beds you can make using these techniques. Play around with this a little bit, I started to, and I got some different looks using the very same materials for these beds. Have fun with the headboard shapes and forms, have fun with the way you're folding the quilts and how you're stacking the pillows. You can even put some small accessories on top of the mattresses, say like a couple of books to make it look like someone was curled up in bed reading. Hopefully this has been a helpful video for you and giving you some techniques that you can add to your arsenal of terrain craft. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment down below, or you can email me at thecraftingmuse.email at gmail.com. If you've liked this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, and you are more than welcome to subscribe while you're here. Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to bringing you another craft soon. Take care, everyone. <sighs> Might help to take the uh, microphone off mute, because, you know important to hear things. Good lord. Hey, yeah, hi, hi. I think that might be it. Oh, don't, don't bang the table when you have the microphone right there. Bye, bye.